Hey there, in today's video, I'm gonna have a look at what running shoes are made of. I made this video because I'm interested in how running shoes are made. I'm interested in why some have different parts and why some have parts that are different. And so I took a part of a variety of these shoes to try and find out how they're made. As always, this video might be long, so there are chapter marks down below so you can skip on through to the bits you might be interested in. Let's get going. I have lots of shoes that I no longer run in, most because I've worn through them or they've come to the end of the working life of the review shoe. Sometimes it's because I, I really don't wanna run in a particular shoe anymore. But anyway, I took a variety of them to the workshop at the university and my running buddy, Liam, cut through them all. On one of their various websites, Nike lists 23 different parts of a running shoe. I'm not gonna go through them all, you'd be relieved to know, but I will go through the main ones, the kind of ones that I usually refer to when I'm reviewing, and there'll be links in the description below to all sorts of articles about running shoe components. Running shoes are made up of two separate sets of components, the upper and the sole, essentially the top and the bottom, and each has a different function of which for me, the sole is the most important, the most critical, and I'm gonna try and demonstrate a little bit with my trusty assistant, Bones. The sole of the running shoe isolates your bones from the ground, stopping cuts and abrasions and cushioning the impact. You can see it here when I hit the bones down on the foam, but of course, as the foot comes up, the foam doesn't come with you and It'd be nice to lay the foam on an entire marathon course, but you can't do that, so you've got to bring your foam with you, which is where the laces come in. Laces are really important and do a number of things. Firstly, they clamp around your foot, securing the foam to your forefoot. And so, again, like my hand gripping, but of course it can slip in and out, and hence at your ankle, there's usually a point where you can tighten, so the laces come together in a pinch point, which prevents the slippage and attaches the foam to your foot. Nike mentioned the 23 parts of the shoe. I'm not gonna go through all of those. I'm gonna go through some of the parts that are above the sole, the sole, and then the tongue. And just go through a couple of things that I usually refer to in, in various videos. And to do that, I'm going to use these. This is the North Face Vective Summit Pro. I haven't really run in it. Get that another day, be reviewed another day. But just to point out some of the, of the different parts on a new shoe, and then I'll go through them in detail on some of these sauna part shoes that are strewn all across the desk. So. First of all, there's the upper, so the bit above the sole, which is the white piece. There is, uh, at the heel, there's, in, in here there's a heel counter, which is a structure to the heel. You'll see it in, in some of the shoes. There's a collar, very important, as I was saying, the laces, because it allows you to, it's essentially the connecting point to tension the back and also around the forefoot. There's also the heel tab, varies from shoe to shoe. Sometimes they go quite high up your Achilles, as these do, a lot of times they don't. There's the toe box at the front, Again, I like to buy a shoe a little bit bigger so that in case there is any slippage, if they're very tight, you end up with a lot of black toes other than just a one or two I've gotten in the past. So uh, the upper, this one is very ventilated and of course that can vary depending on the shoe. The laces in this shoe are very similar to those in the Alpha Fly and also newly in the Metaspeed Sky Plus from ASICS. They have serrated edges to stop, um, to kind of uh, stop uh, or to increase the friction between the laces so they'll stay tied for longer. The laces uh, on this, they sometimes on a trail shoe, there'll be a lace garage where they'll slot into, they don't on this particular shoe. And sometimes there's a, pa most times there's a pass through, there isn't on this so that the the tongue can flap up and down. Not really a problem because your foot keeps the tongue up anyway. It's not something that I particularly uh, bothers me on a shoe. The uh, at the end of the laces, there's a little thing called a an aglet, and that does uh, that sort of stay, keeps the laces from fraying. Sometimes they're decorated. Nike have a few checkered flags on similar shoes, and then again the eyelets here are in a rectangular form, and they're reinforced by the eye stay. And again, all these kinds of things are different on all sorts of different shoes depending on the design methodology behind the shoe. A distinguishing feature of this shoe is you can actually see the carbon plate. It rises up around the heel. You can also see the forefoot in two different parts. That's unusual for a shoe. You usually don't see the carbon plate. And also because this is a trail shoe, the outsole is different from all the other shoes I saw depart in that it has a lot of deeper lugs. Below the sole, there's also a lot of different components. This is a Nike Invincible. So uh, this doesn't have all the components I'm gonna list, but first of all, there's a sock liner. So uh, 
is the old piece that takes out. Usually there's a strobble board. Usually there's a little board inside on top of the foam, but there isn't on this. There is simply just the foam, there's no strobble board. The midsole in this, it's just a whole lot of foam. And then the black line you can see is the outsole. Sometimes there's a carbon plate. There'll be some carbon plate shoes here, particularly in the performance shoe, obviously. There is often a medial post. Now a medial post, if you looked at this, um, it's just pure foam. But a lot of times on a stability shoe, there'll be a harder piece of plastic on one side or other of the shoe to try and direct your foot in a particular way. And also across the middle of the shoe, again, not an issue, there's often a shank, which is a, a structural piece in the middle of the shoe holding it together and sometimes providing a bit more arch support. Liam skillfully sawed through seven pairs of my shoes, of which some are for easy day, tempo day running, carbon plate racing shoes, a stability shoe, a waterproof shoe, a variety of different shoes that we can go through to see different details on different types of shoes. So the shoes are the Hoka Mach 4, the Hoka Rocket X, the Hoka Carbon X, the Hoka Clifton Edge, the Nike Invincible, the On Cloud Venture WP, the latest version, and the Brooks Transcend 6. This is the Hoka Mac 4, a uh, tempo day shoe that I really enjoyed. And just a couple of things about it that you'll see from the cutoff version. So looking at the cutaway piece, this has a couple of things to, to show. There is a strong piece of plastic in the back forming the heel, so a very structured heel. There are two types of foam. Essentially the outsole and the midsole have two different types of foam in them. So the midsole, you'll see this on some of the other shoes, or the outsole is, is quite thick, certainly in the middle part of the shoe, so that the relative outsole to midsole is not as great as is on some of the shoes. There's quite a thick uh, insole, which I'll take out, and you can see the strobble board here and the stitching at the edge. It's got quite a high back at the uh, heel. It's actually quite high and quite cushioned. A fairly, it's a double layered tongue. You can see there's a piece of the pass through left and uh, yeah, it's actually a shoe I enjoyed running in and uh, I wasn't too happy to cut it apart, but it's it's different to a lot of shoes, particularly in the uh, different dent, the different sizes, relative sizes of the midsole and the outsole. This is the Hoka Rocket X, one of my least favorite shoes of all time. Um, it's a carbon fiber plate shoe. It doesn't, unlike a lot of the carbon fiber plate shoes, it doesn't extend past the heel very much. And uh, not a shoe I enjoyed running in. I think this has got 180 Ks and that's about as much as I want to do them. Took extreme pleasure in watching Liam saw these apart. But let's have a look at the cross section. If we look at it, you can see again, there's a bit of heel structure here, plastic piece in here, the trouble board. Uh, you can see there is a carbon plate sandwiched in here, but it's set between two, what look to be two identical pretty much and they feel identical pieces of foam with a very thin outsole. The outsole on this shoe is really thin. You can see it down here and here. Typical of a carbon plate shoe, not designed to last particularly long. And um, again, you see the struggle board um, stitched in, a ventilated fabric. So again, some of the fabrics are more ventilated than others and a fairly lightweight upper. One of my favorite shoes of all time, the Hoka Carbon X, their first carbon plated running shoe, shoe I really, really like. So we'll look at a cross section on this, see a couple of differences. When you spin it around, one of the first things you'll notice is you can't take out the liner, it's glued down to the struggle board, but it's interesting how thin it is compared to say, this is the one that I took out of the Mac 4. So it's quite a bit thinner if I was to lay them down one on top of the other and you'll get an idea of their relative size if I show you them. So in this, uh, what you find is in the Mac 4, this liner is probably taking some of the absorption into account. And in this, it's really all carbon plate. One of the reasons that the foam is dark is that when Liam sliced through the plate, 
it, it, it leaves the carbon, effectively like lead, on the white foam. You can see the little grooves here to allow it to fold. And again, you can see it coming back up around the heel. No structure or almost no structure to the heel. Again, a lightweight racing shoe. And you can see on through here, you could actually see into the carbon, one of the selling points. I wore these extensively, way more than uh, sort of 300K that I usually do. And a very lightweight upper on the uh, Carbon X. Another favorite shoe of mine, the Hoka Clifton Edge. If we have a look at the cutaway section, so uh, here we have again, it's a thin liner stuck down on this double board. Um, and again, quite a thick outsole and quite pronounced. It goes quite far either side of the shoe. That was, the, I suppose, the big thing of the shoe. It had a, quite a thin tongue up at the top, but it's, it's got some sort of padding here. Again, a very structured heel that came quite far up the back of the shoe. But this, um, I'm not exactly sure what the shoe was its intention was, but I found it to be a very comfortable shoe uh, to run in for sort of every day. And I use it on a lot of varying terrain where I found the big size of it helped with the differential terrain. So yeah, a shoe they didn't replace, but uh, one I really liked. This is the Nike Invincible, the first version. I'll probably refer to it as the Invincible one. A favorite shoe of mine is about 300K in this, but it wore through quite badly here, but a shoe I enjoyed running in, but has a lot of uh, unique features in it. If we have a look at the uh, section through the Invincible, it's, uh, well, it's all about the foam and lots of it, lots of Nike Zoom X foam and not a lot else going on in the shoe. There is a liner that's removable and um, a fairly padded tongue, but effectively it's about the foam. And as I said before, there's no struggle board. The upper is stitched directly into the foam with a thin outsole and a very cushioned, a really, really cushioned collar. You can see it here. It's really, I think there's three, three layers of foam there plus an outer wrapping, but yeah, a shoe. They changed the design of this in later versions that I haven't run through, but we'll look forward to sawing through, or Liam will saw through to my hope, at some point in time and compare it to different versions. But yeah, this one, it's all about the foam. This is the on-running Cloud Venture. I don't know what version it is because they didn't call their version. It's the latest version. And I hope they make another version, but I'm not certain they will. But um, I do some running in it, but I primarily use it as an everyday walking shoe on the beach, a much loved shoe. This is the second uh, one I have, the second edition. I wear them to learn nearly for falling apart. There's massive wear here, and there's wear all across the bottom they've worn on the outsole. And I suppose the first thing to say is these have got huge, big lugs. I was talking about lugs earlier, and um, these ones have huge, uh, uh, big ones for, for grip. And um, yeah, let's have a look at the cross section. The cross section of a, a trail shoe is always interesting, but particularly it's also interesting, this is a waterproof version. So the first thing is there's a very hard piece of plastic in the middle of the sole, and I'm guessing that's to protect against rocks. So that's the first thing I've noticed is a really, really hard, hard piece. And uh, the back, there is some structure, it's flexible. You can see the liner is substantial and it's, it's, it's removable, but the stitched in, inner part goes all the way around. Presumably that's uh, where the waterproof layer in part. A couple of other things to note on the shoe, apart from the rocks, and, the, and you, can, you can definitely see the cutout there of all the lugs, but it has a sort of gusseted area here so that the, uh, the tongue is physically attached uh, along the side here so that any water, rocks, gravel, etc., going in doesn't penetrate down into the shoe. You can see half the piece of the lace garage, so essentially you tuck your laces in those so in half, so that's only half of that. A lot of bumper protection up at the front, so there's extra padding so that should you hit rocks, etc. There's also some on the side. And if I spin it around here, you can see that some of the eyelet design, so there are little round eyelets with the very thin laces. And then every now and then there's a, a, a sort of a piece of fabric to allow for some movement and then on's typical O on their, on their eyelet. But uh, yeah, I really do hope they replace this shoe with a newer version. This is the Brooks Transcend 6. I think I've had every version. It's a very plush stability shoe and uh, I've worn it extensively. I don't know how many kilometers I'm in this, but I've worn this and all its other versions extensively. So uh, let's have a look at the uh, cutaway version. When we spin the shoe around the Transcend 6, the first thing I notice is this big, thick, back black piece of plastic in amongst the white foam. It's more dense than this around and that's the shank. It's giving some structure to the shoe and it's also providing some support, additional support under the arch. You can also see how padded this shoe is and there's structure. Again, there's a plastic structure in the heel. It actually, physically you can feel it. It doesn't bend like you might find on some of the racing shoes which would have almost no structure. Um, the outsole is in different colors, red and black, some has traction and very thick. You can see the foam that's buried within the uh, 
the tongue and again on the top of the collar it's really really comfortable shoe and on the outside here's some of the uh, plastic that's used to kind of uh, counteract and provide some stability in in the shoe yeah yeah shoe i enjoyed running in uh, rather a lot the fundamental question for me in regard to a pair of running shoes is does it add up to more than the sum of its parts and sometimes yes the hooker carbon x sometimes no the hooker rocket x and the great shoes definitely add up to more than the sum of its parts and uh, yeah going to find out about these in a couple of weeks i hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful if you did it would be great if you would hit the like button as always there'll be lots of stuff in the description below and i'll happily answer any question you put into the comments there'll be a big blue subscribe button popping up there and some other videos there thanks for watching until the next video just keep running along Thank <laughs> you.